there's one good thing you can say about driving a herd up the Sedalia Trail. Beeves stay beeves. The drovers stay human, and trouble is always saddling up a fresh horse, preparing to ride with you. What you can't be sure of is the direction it's coming from, the face it's going to be wearing, the name it'll be traveling under. What you can be sure of is that trouble knows your name. Mine's Gil Faber, trail boss. Just like the map said. Uh, afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to help me get on off the horse. Still don't want to say you're sorry, huh? What do you mean, sorry? I mean, you're taking off the drive just because you got a little hitch in your get along. Have you ever tried bumping up and down on that chuck wagon? Up and down, down and up. Every time that wagon's going up, I'm coming down. Boy, it jars me. My back's jarred. I ain't sure I ain't jarred for good. Well, Mr. Favor told me to get you well while we're in this town, so you just look around up and down the street there and see if there's anything going to make you well except them signs. What's wrong with the signs? Looks like some medicine man might have wrote them. Guaranteed cure for rheumatism, ulcers, white swellingness, and general debility. You got any better idea what I could do? No, and I can't take you back to the drive till you get better. You're mighty well told you can. So? Well, so I'll get well. But my back hasn't got any choice but to get well in a town like this. Ah, uh, just because you heard this town is a spay. It isn't a spay, it's a spa. Spa? Yeah, a spa. That's what they call a town that's a healing place. Spa. How you spell it? S-P-A. S-P-A, spay. Why don't you call a spay a spay? Well, that's very funny. I'm going to laugh and laugh at that. Well, go ahead and laugh. Might do you good. Water and feed them, gents? Yeah, how much? By the day, week, or month? By the hour. Whatever you say. I'll meet you back at the hotel after I send a telegram. <laughs> Go for you, mister. Yeah, I want to send a message to Sedalia, Missouri. Well, let's have it. Well, I haven't written it out yet. You got something I can write on? Well, you know what you want to say? 
I guess I do. Well, then say it. I can send as fast as you give it to me. Who's it going to? It goes to Mr. Dan Reynolds at the Drover's Hotel in Sedalia, Missouri. Tell him to wire information about their current beef price trend. Uh, favor will pace the movement of herd accordingly. Sign Pete Nolan. That'll be 35 cents. When can I expect to hear back? Depends on who's drinking and who ain't. Might take a couple hours, might take a week. I need to hear in a couple hours. I hope nobody's drinking. <laughs> Someone. A little fellow with a beard and a bad back. You looking for me? Excuse me. Out of your mind? Well, I'm taking a mud bath. I thought you wanted to dock your back, not your face. Well, can I help it if I slipped a little? Besides, you don't look too good, and you ain't taking the treatment. for our trail outfit. Trail outfit? How big? 3,000 head. It's a lot of beef. Where are you taking it? Sedalia, Missouri. First big trail outfit I've heard of up this way. 3,000 head. It's a man-sized job. I should know I'm a cattleman myself. Well, I'm not in charge. Gil Favor's the trail boss. I do the scout. His name's Pete Nolan. Paul Evans. Sit down. Are you going to be around here for a while? Might be a couple of days. Might be we could do a little uh, drinking and bragging this evening, huh? <laughs> Sounds all right to me. Beat sitting over there in that boarding house. How'd you get clean so fast? Well, two tubs. One with mud, one with clear water. You feel any better? Well, what do you expect out of a mud bath? Now, I've got to take me a mineral bath. Must cure everything from bunions to bullet holes. What are you hanging around for? You look healthy enough to do a day's work. All right, boys. I'd like nothing better than doing a day's work. Trouble is, I can't make my legs feel the same way. on me? How do you feel? When are you going to stop asking, Laurie? I think I'll always ask. I told you before we left home that bringing me here was a waste of time. I'm a cripple. If you haven't accepted that I have. But that doesn't mean I want anyone feeling sorry for me, least of all you. All right, Paul. Not going to let anything upset that composure, are you? That prissy schoolmistress composure of yours. Will you let me talk to Again? you? Again? All right, talk. I'm trying to make up my mind about something. Congratulations. Anything I can do to help? It's something important to both of us. What is it, the Besson party? Should you go or should you stay away? Paul. Again, it depends on whether I want to go or not, doesn't it? Can't stand the idea of having me sitting there in a wheelchair and spoiling it for you, can you? 
It isn't a matter of standing it. I've always been able to stand it. All right, Laurie. I'll let you know if I decide you can go to the party. I'll let you know if I decide you should stay home like a good, loyal, long-suffering wife. Does that take care of your problem? Yes, Paul. And I should have known you'd be such a help. Yeah, you seem to be moving better. You think that mineral bath helped? Pain's gone for the time being. Maybe it's worthwhile coming here after all. Let's just see if I get a good night's sleep for a change. Back from Sedalia for you. Good, let's have it. Well, some other party sent the wire. It said Dan Reynolds is out of town, won't be back till tomorrow. Well, we'll check with you in the morning. It's open. Come in. Mr. Nolan. Yeah, I brought over one of our trail maps. I thought you might be interested. Good, sit down. <clears throat> Show you where we go. Now, here we are here. We go right up through the Indian Territory, over into Kansas, and right up to Sedalia, Missouri. You think you get through there with most of your beeves? Well, we figured it that way when we left San Antonio. We haven't changed our minds yet. Ooh. I wish I could go with you. Funny thing, I... I've been keeping away from people lately. You come along and I feel right at home with you. I wonder if I could ask you to do me a kindness. Anything I can. My wife hasn't had it too easy since I was hurt. Weren't for me, she could be having good times. Like tonight, there's a party over at Besson's Ranch. I'm not up to traveling ten miles back and forth. You'd be doing me a real service if you'd take her to that party. I haven't even met your wife, Mr. Evans. Isn't there someone she knows you can send her with? Oh, well, my brother Jubal, but he's running the ranch while I'm away. Mr. Nolan, I haven't been too easy to get along with. I used to live in a saddle like you. Glue to this chair is no life for me or for her. Do this for me, would you please? Laurie? Yes, Paul. Would you come here a minute, please? I want you to meet someone. I'll be there in a moment. I can't tell you how glad I am that you came over. We haven't been getting along too well lately. I get to feeling low and I take it out on her. I don't mean to, but... Lori, right, this is Mr. Nolan. He's a scout for a trail outfit. Moving north to Sedalia, Missouri. Mr. Nolan, my wife, Lori. Mrs. Evans? How do you do, Mr. Nolan? A new dress? Yes, I bought it yesterday. Looks just right for the party tonight. Mr. Nolan's taking you. Mr. Nolan. You need to go to that party, Lori. Do you good. Besides, you don't want folks saying that you can't get out because your husband's a stay at home. Paul, I don't I mind. I want not you going. to go. I mean it. What about it, Pete? Mr. Nolan, this is an imposition. You must say no. Well, I'd be glad to take you to the party. Good. How about a drink, huh? Fine. Well, I know you ain't asked for my two cents worth, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Any man that lets himself get talked into squiring another man's wife to a party is plumb loco. Wishbone, I told you, her husband asked me as a favor to him. I don't care what he asks you. You're letting yourself in for trouble. They're fine people. If a man like that asks you to do something for him, you try to do it. You better get her back by midnight or by morning this whole town will be buzzing. Wishbone, you would have made somebody a wonderful mother. Mr. Evans? Mrs. Evans? My wife looks very beautiful tonight. Wouldn't you say so, Mr. Nolan? 
Oh, yes, sir. I'd say so. Good night, Paul. Good night, sir. Evans could do about it either. Wonder how his brother Juba will take it when he finds you out that you. You always wonder about things that are none of your business. Yeah. And if you don't cut in, you're going to get cut out. Do me the honor, Miss Evans. <laughs> Grab that lady in calico and get her over here on the floor. Hey, we need another couple right there. Another couple over here. Bring the lady on the floor, and here we go. Everybody out. Hey, cowboy, bring that girl in calico and bring her on out here. Paul, can I dance? No. What I can't figure is how this stranger got the honor. We all thought it was Jubal. You shut your big, small-town mouth. Now bow to your partner. Your corner's on. Now circle little left and go down the hall. Circle little left in a great big ring. All the way round a great big ring. Now revert back, single file. Lady, lady, just run wild. When you get home, everybody sway. Everybody sway. Now ladies, just set her back to the bar. Get out of here. You go, I'll follow. Don't be too long. Now, Jim, just sit back to back. Harold, go down the outside track. All the way around this big old ring. When you get back home, everybody's playing. Everybody's playing. You don't surround your corner, girl. Now, follow your partner. I haven't pranced around so much in months. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it much as I did. Oh, yes. Mr. Nolan, would you mind getting me a glass of punch? Sure. Have a glass of punch? Not here, you will not now. I thought you were coming along. I couldn't. It didn't work out. Who's the man? A trail scout Paul just met and liked. Why did you bring him out here? I couldn't help it. Paul insisted. It doesn't matter. You're leaving with me. No, I don't know, Jubal. Look, you packed your bag. Nobody told you to do that. You're not putting me off this time. This is a thing we could be sorry for, terribly sorry. We've talked about all that. It's settled. I wish I could be sure. If you're worried about money, I sold 200 steers. I got paid in cash. 
I got everything we need to take us wherever we want to go. In style. Paul's money. Paul's steers. Who has a better right to them? You think Paul would have what he has now if I hadn't helped him get it? I helped him and he took it all. There's no sharing with Paul. Had to be the boss, top man. I know. And the way he treats me like a hired hand. Look at the way he treats you. Don't tell me I want to stay around here and take it. No, no, of course not. All right, then you're leaving with me. You gotta say it now and do it now. All right, all right, I'll go. But I don't, I don't want to go right away. Why? Well, people might notice Mr. Nolan might start looking for me. Now or later, what difference does it make? Your glass of punch, Mrs. Evans. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Nolan, this is my brother-in-law, Jubal Evans. How are you? How are you? Well, would you care to dance? She doesn't want to dance anymore. Well, why don't you let her decide? You better go inside and have yourself a time. I'll take care of Lori. Do you care to dance? Not now, Mr. Nolan, thanks. Now, you better go on inside. Look, I can go inside without you guiding me. Jubal. All right, but just tell him to go away. I hope you won't mind if I let Jubal take me home. Home? Well, back to town. Is that where you're going? What do you mean by that? Jubal, let me handle this. Uh, it's all right, Mr. Nolan. Why don't you do as Jubal said? Go inside and enjoy yourself. Mrs. Evans, this afternoon when I went to rent a buggy to drive us here, I didn't think much about it when the stable keeper told me you'd rented the only one he had. I figured you already knew you were coming here, but it's none of my business. And then I couldn't help wondering about the bag, the traveling bag, the one you wanted me to leave alone. It's kind of big just for a party. I don't see how this concerns you, Mr. Nolan. Well, that's what I kept telling myself until I met your brother-in-law. This shouldn't concern you either. You're getting ready to leave your husband tonight, aren't you? This just doesn't concern you, Mr. Nolan. Paul Evans put you in my charge, and I brought you here. Take your hands off her. Please stay out of it. You want to leave him, that's between you and your conscience, but you're going to do it after we get back to town. Mr. Nolan. He's hurt. He's all right. Come on, let's go. Mr. Evans? Scream. Get up! <laughs> I just got to get a breath of cool air. Why, Juba, what on earth happened to you? I'm all right. You'd better come right into the house and lie down. I got no time for that. Soon not meet up with him. Well, I'm not going to let you go through with Better not, will you? That was a fool thing to do. Listen, get in that bug here, I'll put you in it. don't need your help. Well, 
I hope you can hike in them dancing shoes. You don't think I'm going to walk back to town? There don't seem to be any other way, thanks to you. I'm not leaving here. Well, then we'll spend the night. We're going to need a place where there's some shelter. Spend the night out here? Don't be ridiculous. We passed a spot about a mile back where there's an outcropping and some brush and stuff. I think we can build a fire. It won't be seen from the road. I'm staying here. <laughs> there for all you care. I was wondering how much longer you were going to be stubborn. I'd never have found you if it hadn't been for the fire. Oh, I figured you'd see it all right. Might as well get comfortable. This makes things different, doesn't it? Different? You can hardly expect to take me back to town now. Oh, I'll take you back, all right. How? You plan on carrying me? If you think I'll walk, you're mistaken. I'll find that rig in the morning. That old horse won't run too far. And you're still going to insist on taking me back. I thought we'd settled it. You settled it the way you wanted. I'm not going back. Oh, we'll talk about that in the morning. Will you believe me when I tell you Paul doesn't even care if I go back? Of course he cares. You're his wife. And I also remind him of his frustrations, his helplessness. He hates having me around. What happened to Mr. Evans? A horse fell and rolled on him. When was that? A year and a half ago. Well, you take a man that's crippled like that, a man that was once strong and important, he needs understanding. Understanding? I have tried to understand him. I have fetched and carried and given him sympathy for hours on end. Well, you made that contract when you married him. And I wanted to carry it out, but he wouldn't let me. He would not let me. Too bad he's not here. You can tell him about it. All right. Be smug. Be righteous. Why don't you get some sleep? So I can look refreshed when you drive me back? You've only known Paul a matter of hours. Why do you care so much about taking me back to him? Well, let's just say I'd like to finish the job once I start it. So this is a job, is it? You're interfering in my life just because of some small amount of pride you carry around with you? Are you really in love with your husband's brother? I suppose in your mind that makes me the wrong kind of woman. Well, are you in love with him? What difference does it make? Well, you can probably answer that better than I can. I wonder just how deep this self-righteousness of yours really goes. Think how it could be if you were to take me away.
Well, the wood's getting a little lower. I better get some. Do you believe in things happening to people all of a sudden? Important things? Well, you can't see a man die in a stampede without knowing that. I mean other things. Yeah, I imagine it goes for other things. Feeling between a man and a woman? Maybe. There's something I want you to know before we leave here. I've never been in love with Jubal. He hated Paul the way I began to hate him. He gave us something in common. We had lots of talks. I agreed to go away with him. There's something else I want you to know. I'm still going to leave Paul, not with Jubal, but I'm going to leave him. Well, we better get going. You know what it means for us to go back into town now? Yeah, I know. What are you going to tell my husband? I'm going to tell him the truth. What is the truth? That we started back and had an accident. No more. Is there any more? Suppose he doesn't believe you. Well, we'll just have to take that chance. Let's go. Town last night. I didn't want to bother you, so I took a room. I was wondering if you were feeling any better. I left you in charge of the ranch. Don't worry, everything's all right. It better be. You know, I can do big things with that ranch if you give me more authority with the hands. Man makes his own authority in this country, Jubal. You treat the hands like they were dirt. They just don't like you. Where's Laurie? Went to a party at Besson's last night. Yeah, I was there. I know. Got yourself mixed up in some kind of fight. Got beat up and rode off in a huff, huh? What time she get in? She didn't. Out all night? I expect to some good reason for it. Nice time at the party? It was a nice party. I've been wondering if you ever got there. We got there. Decide to stay over? No, we left early. So I heard from everybody that attended. Oh, we had an accident on the way back. A horse ran off. I can't make up my mind about you, Mr. Nolan. Either you got more gall than a polecat. Wait a minute, Mr. Evans. You asked me as a favor, take your wife to that dance and look out after her. I did that. What about it, Laurie? What he says is true, Paul. Tom, get Mrs. Evans' bag and take it inside. Well, I'll take the buggy back to the living Never mind. Jubal, take care of it.
You two know each other? We might have met last night. Jubal Evans. Pete Nolan. Goodbye, Mrs. Evans. Mr. Didn't hear nothing from Sedalia yet. Where are you staying? Oh, at the boarding house. Well, if you want to pay an extra 15 cents, I'll bring the message over as soon as it gets here. All right. Where have you been all this time? We won't go into that. Well, maybe you won't, but there's some folks in this town that will. You can't keep a married woman out all night. Oh, shut up. Now, Pete, there's something you ought to know, and I'm going to tell you. That woman's husband is the biggest cattle rancher this side of Fort Worth. He's got a dozen wranglers all over town. Now, that's mighty bad odds in an unfriendly place. I can't leave till I get that message from Sedalia. Pete! Just let me ask you one thing. Why did you let that drover take you away last night? I don't want to talk about it. All right, we'll forget it for now. We'll talk about it later. The important thing is our getting away from here. I'm not going with you. You're not what? I'm not going away with you, Jubal, ever. Look, quit acting like a schoolgirl. You can't shake off the way we feel for each other. I don't feel the same way you do. You couldn't change that quickly. Not unless something happened last night. It never meant the same to me. You're lying. You went soft with that drover. Sure, you go for a ride in the dark with some stranger, and all of a sudden he's a man in your life. Do you know what you are? Tell me, Jubal. Tell me what I am. Get it over with, and then let me alone. Does Paul know how you feel about this? I'm sure he will now, as soon as you tell him. Who's dreaming about it, Pete? Your pay for the whole drive wouldn't make a dent in the price of this. I got the right horse for it. <laughs> the horse can't afford it any better than you can. How much longer are we gonna stay around here? We leave those horses in the corral much longer, they're gonna get spoiled on us. I can't leave till I get a message from Sedalia. Well, I'll go on up to the telegraph office. I'm getting a queasy feeling about this town. Why you keep on cleaning those guns is more than I can see. You know you'll never get the chance to go hunting again. Thanks for the kind thought, brother mine. Right now, I say you got more important things to think about. We've been all through it three times. And you just sit there cleaning guns. Why are you so fired up about this? Lori's my wife, not yours. If you have no family pride, I have. Lori told me everything was all right. I believe her. She never lied to me in her life. I say you're thinking like a fool. I don't want to hear anything more about it, Jubal. You understand? What are you doing? The 
down there. That's your drover friend, isn't it? Look there. Watch where she's going. Well, why would she be going there if I wasn't right? And why is he staying in town so long? He's supposed to be with a herd of cattle, isn't he? down the street. Yes, sir. Come in. What are you doing here? Why have you stayed in town? Well, I'm waiting for a telegram message. I've been thinking I might be the reason. You are making things worse. Things couldn't be worse. What with Jubal and Paul here? I'm caught between the hatred of both of them. Your husband doesn't hate you. How can you know? The other afternoon when he brought you in and introduced us, he did it like he was proud of you, like he wanted to show you off. A man doesn't do that with a woman he hates. You should hear the way he talks to me when we're alone. Well, that's because he's afraid. Afraid, Paul? Listen, I know he's been a tough-minded, hard-nosed man. He was proud of his strength. Now that it's gone, he's afraid of losing you. You don't know Paul. I've seen it before. A man like this doesn't want to let on how much he needs someone. He'll do anything to cover up the fear and pain. Paul isn't afraid of anything, and pain doesn't bother him. It's always easy for you to think that way. It's always easy to sleep on another man's hurt. It's no use, Mr. Nolan. I am still going to leave him. And when I do, I'd like to go with you. And if that seems as though I'm laying my pride at your feet, well, I... Sounds crazy. Yeah, he is crazy. Crazy with hurt. Larry! I'll find you, both of you! Get her! Inside. What are you going to do? We need time for him to wear out that rage. He'll kill you now if he finds you. He'll kill you, too. I know it. Larry! I'm going to try to draw him off. I'll make him come after me. The minute I draw him off, you get her inside.
Mr. Evans, I don't want to fight you, but you come any closer, I'll kill you. Keep going, keep going! Paul! Go ahead, Paul. If you must kill someone, kill me. Get out of here. That man did nothing to hurt you. I was going to leave before he ever came here. I was going to leave with Jubal. Jubal? You and Jubal? You all saw what he's going to do. So you're going to run away, huh? Try to talk, Paul. Jubal always wanted everything I had. Everything. Even you. I wasn't gonna shoot you, Laurie. I couldn't have pulled the trigger. I guess I thought I, I could scare you into staying with me. I guess I've been trying to scare you into that for a long time. I won't try anymore. I won't try anymore. Get a doctor before he bleeds to death. No danger of that, ma'am. It's a good thing you were in that chair. Deflected a bullet just enough to save your life. He is bleeding, though. Better get him inside. Lori. Lori. that message finally got here? Yeah, I think there's somebody who wants to see you. I'll go get the horses. How's he feeling? Much better. He's going to stay here in town and try swimming in the springs. Your friend said it might help him in time. That's something to be hopeful for. You going now? Yeah. Are you leaving me with him? What else can I do? You know what that means? If I stay now, it means I'll stay here forever. Well, you'll have to make up your own mind to that. You made up my mind. Goodbye, Mr. Nolan. Goodbye. Settle, I'll scare up a fire. Admit to hearing what I think I hear.
come see him? Yeah. Just what besides girls are those? Ballet dancers. Well, I've seen ballet dancers at the Turkish Delight Saloon in San Antonio. Ballet, not belly. Longer skirts and shorter legs. Yeah, it's a big thing in Europe. Very popular. Well, I'm just going to be very popular in Texas, too. Mm -hmm. from here. Will you please follow me? You you weren't here from the beginning, were you? I know. Oh, well, I cannot permit that. A ballet must always be seen from the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't know one was being performed out here. Oh, I'm McKay. And Gil Favor, this is Roddy Yates, my ramrod. Ramrod? What's that? Oh, it means second in command. I'm trailboats of a herd that's coming through this way. Aye, indeed. Oh, I'm impressed. Won't you sit down? It's wine. French wine. The only thing to drink when you're seeing a beautiful ballet performance. Say, Mr. McKay. Yes, lad. This is a strange place to be holding a ballet. Oh, nonsense. There are times when McKay has to go to Europe to get a ballet. There are other times when the ballet has to be brought to McKay. <laughs> Maestro. Si, senor. And now you see a ballet as it should be seen. From the beginning, please. Grazie, grazie, signor McKay. And now, the 20 ounces of gold dust, as promised. Am I correct? You are a very generous, signor. My mountains are very generous to me. Ladies, you were marvelous. You were a delight to the eye and the heart. And I'd like to give you a little present. Here, there's one for you. One for you. One for you. What's he giving him, Rox? I'll one give you nice long odds. Those are nuggets. One for you. Gold? And he one carry it around like that? Oh, where would he get it? You heard him say those mountains of his had been very generous to him. And here's one for you. Now run along. Younger men are waiting all over the world. You mustn't keep them waiting. Oh, uh, Mr. McKay. Oh, yes. You don't have to thank me for the performance. I was happy to share my pleasure with you. Um... Trey 
here, boss, you see. That's right. Where's she heard? About five, six hours ride south of here. Why aren't you with it? Well, we have to ride into Endicott in the morning. Endicott? <laughs> I know the town. It's a dusty eyesore on the bosom of the prairie. Keep away from it. There isn't a girl to be found within its dirty confines. Well, we may not have to go there now we've run into you. We just wanted to get some information there about the dead mountains. What would you be seeking in the dead mountains? Water and a pass for the cattle. Plains are dry as a bone. Maybe you could tell us about it. Uh, you said you owned the mountain. I do. What is it you want to know? Is there a way for the cattle to get through? That is indeed. And water? Enough to flourish a desert. Well, that's good news. Could you let us know the best way in? I take you there myself. Goodbye, Mr. McKay. Oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh, McKay. Bless him. Where are your horses? Oh, we got them right across the knoll there. We were going to make night camp. Huh? They come. Go and get your horses and meet me here. Fine. Funny old Jasper, isn't he? Yeah, it was a lucky break running onto him like that. Looks like a real old desert rat, the way he's dressed. Having them burrows and all. Mm. Well. The way he's throwing that gold around, he's one who found what he was looking for. He must have taken off as soon as we turned our backs. Yeah, but he was going to take us into the mountains. Yeah, except that must be the one thing in the world he's most afraid of. We ain't after any gold. You don't know that. Well, what do we do now? Well, wait till sunrise, right up to those dead mountains, see if we can find a pass ourselves. So far, so good. Of course, we haven't gone far yet. Uh. Hold it. We ought to try making a run for it, huh? Well, this child ain't about to try and outrun bullets. People in them. Raise your hands. Get off the horses. Where's he going for help? They don't need any more help as far as I'm concerned. Why do you come to Dead Mountains? We look for water and a pass for our cattle. There is a pass. There is water. But they are both sacred to the Indians. You 
have come this far. No farther. We've got 3,000 head of cattle. They have to have water. Now, if your people need cattle, maybe we could trade. No white man comes to Dead Mountains. White man, you're letting him go in the canyon. No white man rides to dead mountains. What are you talking about? He's riding right in there. I see no one. Must be joking or something. You're free to go back where you came from. What about our guns and horses? Okay. We don't want to break any of your tribal customs. Maybe it's only this pass that's sacred. This pass and all passes. Well, maybe it's only this part of the range. Every mountain in this range, every rock, every tree, every blade of grass is sacred to us and to our ancestors. You know, I might believe that if it wouldn't. Uh, never mind. We wish you no harm. No blood has been drawn. We do not return, because if you do, there will be harm, and blood will be drawn. Whiskey or whiskey? Whiskey. You got a nice little town here. Endicott? You ain't had a real good look at it. Yeah, most stores did seem to be shut up. Permanent. Mr. Endicott ain't no town. It's just the leftovers. Well, you're in business. Uh, I'm just too lazy to move anyplace else. Besides, there was a time when Endicott was pretty flourishing. Lots of people had high hopes. What happened to it? Hopes need nourishing. Only reason old man Endicott started the town was he was sure there was gold in the dead mountains. Ain't there? Lots of men went into the mountains looking for it. Only one of them ever come back. Old man McKay. Ever hear of him? Yeah, we heard of him. Every day, every week. Gunman. Fortune hunters come trailing into town, all looking for old man McKay's gold. All of them packing guns, willing and anxious to use them. Uh, what's your interest in the Dead Mountains? You looking for gold, too? No, not gold, water. We got 3,000 head of cattle on the Sedalia Trail. Why would you want to take cattle into them mountains? There ain't any water on the plains for 30 miles, that's why. If I was moving 3,000 head of cattle, I sure wouldn't want to take them into country I didn't know nothing about. That's why we're in Endicott, for some information about them. Information won't do you no good. What you need's a guide. You need somebody who knows them mountains as well as he knows his way from that front door over at this bar. Got anybody in mind? Yes, I have. How'd you like to earn some money? No. Look, you're running short of money, I'm running short of whiskey. Uh-huh. 
First I heard of that. My customers don't pay what they owe me. I can't afford to buy any new stuff. I think you ought to do what I say. Come on. This here's uh, Joel Turner. Howdy. Gil Faber, Ronnie Yates. Uh, I was born and raised in this part of Texas. I could take you blindfold, any nook or corner. Could you get 3,000 head of cattle through the dead mountains? Sure. What about Indians? There are not many up in the hills. They stopped us. Oh? Where'd you come up from? South. They must have tried Echo Pass. There are lots of others. Much better suited for driving cattle through. Fine. Job juice for the asking. I'm your man. Good. You ready to start out? As soon as I get my gear. We'll be right here. Excuse me. Are you going into the dead mountains? We oh, sure are, man. Uh, that's right, miss. My name is Barbara Frazier, and I came to Endicott yesterday on the stage. How do you do, ma'am? Your favor, Roddy Yates. How do you do? Please take me with you. Now, I know that sounds strange, but my father's in there somewhere, and I've got to find him. We're taking a herd of cattle through. We wouldn't have time to be looking for anyone. But I just want to go along with you. I won't be any bother, really. I've hired a horse, and once we're in the mountains, you wouldn't have to worry about me. I'd like to help you, miss, but uh, there's just no place for you on a cattle drive. But I came all the way from the east, and I'll just do anything to find him. Well, boss, maybe we could go. No, I'm afraid there's nothing we could do for you, ma'am. I'm sorry, Miss Frazier. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. Boss, I ain't one to argue, but Then you know, why are you going to? Well, you heard what she said. She's just looking for her long-lost father. That's her story. Huh? You know, Roddy, I'm beginning to believe half the population of these United States are trying to find a way into the dead mountains to find McKay's gold. Oh, but that isn't the case with her. I mean, she's just here after her father. You heard her say that. Like I said, that's her story. Oh. I don't know how you could displease such a sweet-looking little girl as that. No, oh, practice. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. The only important thing is you're getting us where we want to go to. I'll show you a way to get your herd through the mountains. I had in mind. Ah, good. More than wide enough for the cattle. It don't stay that wide all the way in. The going gets pretty rough for quite a while before we get to water. It seems like it always does. <laughs> That's that eastern girl, isn't it? Yeah. Pick up her horse, Turner. Straight 
if the sight of a mountain isn't the smartest thing in the world to do. I didn't think it would be. What do you have in mind? Going into those mountains alone? I am going into these mountains. My father's in there, and I'm going to find him. Say, your father's name wouldn't be McKay by any chance, would it? McKay? Of course not. It's Frazier. Look, we're, we're going on in there. We can't let her just go on by herself. Why can't we take her with us? Thank you. Well, looks like my mind's been made up for me. Oh, well, Look, no. if I had a choice, I'd send you back to Endicott right now, with him. You think you can manage to sit your horse? Riding with them, we're riding after them. Plan's working out, Danny. Yeah, just like you planned. Yeah, well, let's go. We wouldn't want them to get lost. You know, traveling hasn't been too bad so far. We're past the worst part of it. I think we ought to be able to get our herd through here, don't you? Yeah, sure, I guess so. Well, come morning, Mr. Faber, we've got three or four more hours ride before we get to water. Oh, fine. It was probably just a coyote or something. Well, it was just a mountain lion. You know, for somebody who scares easy, you sure get in some strange places. Oh, I... I just felt like being alone. I felt like remembering my father, the way he was the last time I saw him. He was very tall. Almost as tall as you are. And very gentle. He was educated in Edinburgh and was teaching in Boston. He was a geologist and a mining engineer. Everyone said he had a brilliant career ahead of him. What happened to him? Well, he took me on an excursion one day, left my mother alone in the cabin, and the lamp overturned and the cabin burned down. He started drinking very heavily after a death. I guess he felt guilty about leaving her alone. And then he gave up his teaching job and sent me to live with an aunt and uncle. And then he just disappeared. He went west. There were a few letters at first, but then none at all. What makes you think he's in Texas? Well, I got a letter from him two months ago. You mean he told you to come out here alone like this? Oh, no. He just wanted to know if I was happy and if everything was all right. But in it, he mentioned the dead mountains. And I found out where they are, and here I am. Did uh, he say what he was doing in the dead mountains? Well, he said that a man who had befriended him was using his training and knowledge. It sounds like it could be McKay. He didn't say. He could use his experience as a geologist, help him find the ore, and then as a mining engineer to help him get it out. Mr. Favor, you've just got to help me find him. Look, I've, I've got to get a herd through. You took me with you, and you didn't have to. Yeah, I know. Are you sorry for me? Let's say I made a mistake. 
Why are you so afraid of being human? The only thing I'm afraid of is not getting the job done that I'm paid to do. Perhaps I could pay you, too. I've already been hired. So I guess we'd better get back to camp. turbulent crossing, and the waves of the Atlantic Ocean were rising mountains high, while our little ship was being tossed about like a, like a leaf on a waterfall. But did McKay get scared? Did McKay tremble? He most certainly did. <laughs> 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 and after riding many miles in an iron horse, here I am, home at last. And now I'm going to tell you something you really want to know. On my way back here, I stopped in at your village. And you'd be glad to learn everything's going along fine. I've had some plows shipped out from the east. They put 200 more acres under cultivation. It'll be about a week before your replacements come in. And then you can go back to your village. Mr. McKay? Yes, lad. When you were in our village, did you see my wife? Ah, I did indeed. What's more, I saw your son. A son. I am glad. Ah, of course you are. You want to laugh and dance and sing, don't you? You have a right to. It's a beautiful baby. There are white men camping in mountains tonight. But I wasn't a fallen in. No one's ever been able to do that. It is the two drovers and others. Another man and woman. Also two riders who remain apart. I don't like the sound of it. We'll have to do something about it, Lance, won't we? Dang, we haven't got all day. We should be ready to move out the instant they do. Don't oh, worry, we'll be ready. Ready for what? You men are a long ways from Endicott, aren't you? So are you. There ain't a bar in sight. I'm not leading you to McKay's gold. Of course she ain't. You're just showing that trail, boss. Uh, pass through the mountains. That's right. So why worry about us? I'm not worried about you. I've got my story all ready. I found you following me. You tried to jump me. And I had to kill the pair of you. I don't think that's a very good idea. Do you, Jen? I sure don't. That's too bad. <laughs> Saddlebag. Get it. I'll go in ahead. You cover me. What if they're Indians? We don't know what it is yet. Might be just Turner getting breakfast.
was a pretty good shot. Three holes, not an inch apart. Whoever it was couldn't have gone very far. They might as well be on the other side of the moon. It'll only take them a few seconds to disappear in this. So it'll only take a few seconds for someone to get lost, you mean? It's real enough, all right. What do we do now? We get out of these mountains as fast as we can, if we can. Backtracking on this rocky ground ain't gonna be no joy. Sun might be some help if we knew which way Turner took us, but we don't. Well, sitting around ain't gonna change things. Let's go. Keep on trying. Come on, Mata. What do you mean, keep on trying? We can do that forever. Oh, no. I forgot. We don't have any more water. How long is it before you die of thirst? You're not gonna die of thirst. Well, what am I gonna die of? Look, we got in here, so there must be a way out. We'll find it. The same way those other people did. The ones who came in here and never came out. Look, I don't know or care about them. Well, I do. I know what happened. The same thing that's going to happen to us. They just kept going round and round the way we've been doing, and every rock looked like every other rock, and they kept saying they'd find a way out, and they never did. Hey, boss. Thing, sure. He'll know a way out of here. What will that do us? It'll do us a lot of good if we can keep him in sight. Come on, mount up. he tries to lead us into a trap. You don't have to. We're already in one. Easy, Jim. There ain't any more where that come from. <laughs> All that did was make me thirsty. 
I'm getting sick of these rocks. Maybe you better start to love them. They're likely to be the last thing you'll ever see. We only hadn't lost them drovers. They're likely in the same spot as we are. What are we supposed to do? Stand around here and die? It's been done. Harry. What's he hanging around for? What are you whispering for? He can't hear you. I don't want him to go away. Well, why? That ain't... I got me an Indian. Now, that makes my day here. It ain't smart. That's all I was gonna say. I have done as you said. Fine. And now let's take a look at what flows down to us from the benevolent mountain, huh? You know, at first sight, a foolish man I might think these were pebbles. <laughs> but we know better, don't we, Milan? <laughs> and there's no end to the Golden Mountains. At least, not yet. Out of the rocks, we still keep following him? Yeah, he could have let us deeper into him if he'd wanted to. Maybe he's found a quicker way to get rid of us. Yeah, let's keep following him. That could be a mistake, boss. Yeah, but what's one more? Yeah. and every one of you. You came up here to seek for gold. You came up here looking for water and for grazing land. There's plenty of water and grazing land in the mountains, but not in the direction you were going. We hired a guide. Where is he? He was killed by your people. You're wrong. He was killed by that man and his partner, but he deserved it. He was not leading it to green pastures. We hired him in good faith. Faith means, um, it's a matter of belief, is it not? Why should I believe you? Either you do or you don't. That's a matter of faith for you to decide. You wouldn't be the first to come up to these mountains and never be heard of again. Our drovers will be up looking for us. What chance would they have of hiding this place? What do you think we're so interested in your gold for, anyway? We got 3,000 head of cattle on our hands. Uh, I heard you say that, but I've never seen it. And this girl, why is she with you? She's looking for her father. Oh. What's your name? Barbara Frazier. Was your father one of the men that came up to look for McKay's gold? The story she told us, he's a geologist and a mining engineer. His wife died, he drank up everything back east, so he came west. 
Last place he has heard from was the Dead Mountains. And who did the hearing? He's got a letter from her. A letter? Interesting. Where did your father get his education? Edinburgh. Oh, the girl's clever. She knows everything about the man she's talking of. Everything except one thing. And what's that? He didn't have a daughter. He's lying. Mr. Haver, I sincerely beg your pardon. I bet him a statue of being a murderer, but I'm afraid you've been misled by a pair of pretty eyes, among other things. You see, I'm the man she's talking about. Careful. Now get down there, all of you. There are other braves about, you know. They'll be back. Get down here! Down here! Tyree, is this what we came out here for? If we're lucky, there'll be enough to get us back east. That ain't all the gold there is. You said there was more than a man could carry. There is. He's got it stashed someplace. Now, where do you keep the gold? We don't keep it. We spend it. You saw me kill once, and I'll kill again. I don't mind killing. Matter of fact, you might say I like it. Now, gold never did a dead man any good. So why don't you tell us where you've hidden it? And you might live to mine more. Well, uh, I'm a reasonable man, and there's a good deal of sense in what you say. But we have no thieves at the hill. We manage to keep them out, usually. So all we have to do with the gold is throw it under the sluices. Maybe he's lying. Yeah. You go down and get the gold. As you wish. I suppose you'll want all the gold there is. That's right. All of it. Say, McKay. Yes? Uh, you'll be needing a hand, won't you? Hey! The gold's awful heavy. Come along. Better look him when he's unconscious, isn't he? Thank you, young man. You'd better take him into the sheriff at Endicott. I think you'd better take her, too. I don't think they'll hang her like they will him. But it'll be some time before she gets out to look for a father that never was, and the gold that was never hers. We'll take her in. And when you return, my Indians will show you the finest pass through the mountains on the finest grazing lands. D don't worry. <laughs> you won't be anywhere near this place. <laughs> You. No trail dry should ought to be without one. This kind of thing going all the time? <laughs> no, but it ought to. <laughs> Did you men would enjoy a can can more than a ballet, Mr. Beaver? Huh? Well, they, they appreciate it all right, all right. Hey, uh, one thing bothers me, Mr. McKay. What may that be? These stories about men going into the dead mountains and disappearing forever. There must be 
some truth to it. Yes, possible some of them got lost. Others may have died of thirst or starvation, while others... My Indians are very loyal, Mr. Haber. thing you can say about driving a herd up the Sedalia Trail, if you're fresh to it. It don't make much difference if you're starting out from Texas at the one end or approaching Missouri at the other. The beeves stay beeves. The drovers stay human, and trouble is always saddling up a fresh horse, preparing to ride with you. What you can't be sure of is the direction it's coming from, the face it's going to be wearing, the name it'll be traveling under. What you can be sure of is that it knows your name. Mine's Gil Favor, trail boss. Well, they say you were going. We will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile. They say you are taking the sunshine that will brighten your pathway a while. Hey, Joe. Huh? Turn around and ride back the other way now. What's wrong with the way we're going? Nothing. Then why do we have to turn around and go back? Well, Bailey and Tompkins are night hawking the other side of the herd, I guess. That sounds reasonable. Hey, Joe. Take a look at them steers. They don't have to get up at night. Nope. They don't have to eat wishbones cooking. Nope. But I'm hungry just the same. Find them good feed, good water, easy going. You know what makes us think we got just a good deal? Sedalia. Them steers and us both are going there, but we're the only ones coming back. Yeah, but you consider where they're going, where we're going. For us at San Antonio, another herd, another six months on the trail. With them steers, they're going east. Chicago, St. Louis, big cities. The restaurants with bright, shiny lights are blazing, pretty music. Beautiful women just sitting around. Champagne being poured by the buckets. That's where them steers are going. Yeah, but they ain't gonna be sitting at the table. They're gonna be on the table, on plates. Yeah, you got a point there. And when set by my side, little darling, do not hasten to bid me adieu. But remember the Red River Valley and the cowboy. You hear that? Bugle. What a bugle be doing out here this time of night. Can't see, but he sure ain't Calvary. Well, even if he was, yeah, he got the herd stirred up. Well, he can't be too far away. Let's take off after him. That's too late, but he sure left us a job of work to do.
pretty young. I heard a bugle, Mr. Richfield. You heard a bugle. You heard a what? I heard a bugle. Have you been into my medical supplies again? No, I ain't been sick, Mr. Richfield. All right, then get back down there and bring up those pots and pans. I ain't going down there. Well, I heard that bugle. We must be at least 100 miles away from the nearest fort. Now, even if there was cavalry around here, why would they be blowing a bugle like that in the middle of the night? I don't know. They did. Well, Mushy, I'm going to talk to you like your father. My father never talked to me. I can see why. Well, I'll talk to you like your mother. A bearded mother? Now, you listen to me. My advice to you is always think twice before you speak. Well, at least think once before you speak. Well, yes, sir. On the other hand, maybe it'd be better if you didn't speak at all. Yes, sir. But I can't go around being like a mutt. Why can't you? You're a mutt if I ever saw one. Mutts can't talk. A mutt. You mean a mute. That's what I said, a mutt, yeah. All right. Neither a mutt nor a mute can go around saying that he hears bugles out in the middle of nowhere without somebody thinking there's something wrong with him. And in your case, they might be right. I, I heard a bugle, though. All right. You heard a bugle. Now go back there and bring up that stuff. You come with me. All right. I'll go get them. You go to sleep. Yes, sir, Mr. Whisper. Don't try to help a Jasper out. What do you get for it? Nothing. So I'm telling you, here's bugles. Do any good to interfere. Some of us blessed with good sense, and others just hear bugles. Don't do any good to interfere. You just got. Jumping crawfish. That's a bugle. Doing. The question is, who is he? Doesn't matter who he is. Rowdy, get all the men out to the herd. Right. Let's move out. Pete, you think you can track that Jasper? Not at night. I am not sure you will be able to find any tracks in your feet, day or night. What do you mean? Well, I have the, the story many times. It tells of a phantom bugler riding a phantom horse in the night, calling dead armies to battle. Oh. I've seen a lot of things happen on a trail drive. Fire, flood, wind storms, rain, hail. That's the first time I ever heard a bugler galloping around the herd. Oh, shut up. Ground so hard up there, you can run a herd of buffalo over it, not leave a sign. Yeah, I guess it don't matter as long as he doesn't show up again. How far is it to water? About two miles to the Woosites River. It's wide and deep. Well, we better make camp here. I don't want the herd stampeding the water. We'll take them down in sections. All righty. You uh, pick up Teddy and Bailey and take the first bunch down. Water them at the river and then bed them down there for the night. Well, leave Teddy and Bailey in charge and you come on back. All right. Well, it's a couple hours of sundown. Put on some extra night, guys. That bugler shows up again. I don't want him. You think he will? I know why he came around in the first place. I might be able to answer that.
Yeah, see ya. There you are. Yeah, as we always are. Who's we? The men, me, Judge Brady, Captain Donahue. I think you're trying to tell me something, but I don't know what it is. Well, one thing I'm telling you is that uh, your cattle can go through to the water, but you and your men can't. Yeah, who's going to stop us? We will. What for, anyway? There's a small fee for watering your cattle in the river. What? Since when? So far as you're concerned, since now. Mr. Yates, what's going on? I don't know yet, Teddy. Steers have found the water. Don't worry about them. Look, this is free range, mister. Uh, it used to be. You can't stop anyone from watering their cattle in this river. Well, we can charge you. Why don't you leave your men here, make sure the cattle don't stray, and you come with me to meet Captain Donahoe. I wouldn't do that, Mr. Yates. You don't know what he's up to. Suit yourself, Mr. Yates. Uh, by the way, my name is Ben Wallace, in case you wanted to know. Right. Teddy, you go back and tell Mr. Favor. If that's all right with you, huh, Wallace? They can ride anywhere they want, except toward the river. Uh, Bailey, you stay here and watch the cattle. Sure, I'll do that. There's not going to be much I can do if they want to start anything. I didn't ask you to do anything. I understand. All right, I'm ready. You better give me your gun. Let's go. You know, I got to admit one thing. You're a lot braver man than I am. If I was you, I wouldn't be riding off with me. Well, you wouldn't, huh? No, that's why I asked for your gun back there. You see, going up to where we're going, there's just going to be you and me. A oh, brave man like you might try things. I don't want the chances to be even. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Captain Donahue made me a lot of promises, but all I get to do is watch his horse. Best leader a man could ask for. Yeah, so far, all he's got us is short ration and dirt. This place is going to be a real town someday. We're going to own it. If this ever does become a town, I'll tell you who's going to own it, that Judge Brady. I hear someone mentioning my name. Well, I was just saying that things ain't happening very fast. Don't pay no attention to Thompson, Judge. He's always grousing. I hope he's not too unhappy. We're embarked on a great enterprise. We need confidence, enthusiasm. My daughter would not be married to Captain Donahoe if I did not believe in him. That's right. She's real pretty, too, Judge. Thank you. She's very pretty. Captain Donahoe is very manly. Uh, very manly. And he's a gentleman, too. <laughs> Well, he was commissioned during the war, wasn't he? That makes him an officer and a gentleman, don't it? Very true. Only trouble is, he ain't nothing more than a farmer who knows how to fight. But he does know how to fight. Mary, I'm talking to you. Let's not raise our voices again. I'm sorry, but you just don't listen to me anymore. No. I'm afraid it's you who doesn't listen to me anymore. You only listen to my father. Well, I admit, I ain't got the education your father's got. I know. He's told you you're an officer and a gentleman, and you've got the documents to prove it. The trouble is, I married a man, not his documents. It's only when you try to be something you're not that you upset me. You mean when I try to behave like your father does? You don't like it? Like he wants you to. Why do you think I lead a bunch of rotten jayhawkers? Why do you think I came out here? For money. That's all my father wants. That's all your father needs. He's got everything else. Well, I ain't. Sure, I could go back and become a farmer again, but you wouldn't like that. I married you. You married me because I got hopes and ambition. Because during the war, I got someplace. And the war is over. 
Well, my life is. I just hope that our life isn't over. Captain Donahoe, this is Mr. Yates, a drover. Mr. Yates? Captain of what? Why did you bring him here? Oh, he's with a herd trying to water down at the river crossing. Did you tell him about the toll? Yes, sir. But uh, he didn't like my explanation. You're not going to like my explanation, but you're going to pay the toll. You didn't answer my question. What are you captain of? Fourth Springfield. That was during the war. That was during the war. Well, there ain't no war on now. My men call me captain as a matter of courtesy, something a drover wouldn't know anything about. I'll tell you something. A drover don't know anything about paying a toll to water his cattle in a river. You're one drover that's going to find out. How do you do? I'm Judge Brady. Yes, Judge, this is uh, Mr. Yates. Very happy to meet you, Mr. Yates. He's captain of nothing. What are you judge of, huh? The story of my past would bore you just as much as it bores me. Wallace, take care of Mr. Yates' horse. Oh, and have Thompson bring us some wine. Shall we be seated, Mr. Yates? Yeah. I was just going to suggest that, Judge. Of course you were. Mr. Yates? Captain? America is a great nation, Mr. Yates. The rate of expansion westward is incredible. Fifty years from now, hundreds of thousands of people will be living in this very area. I ain't exactly interested in 50 years from now. We intend, Captain Donahoe and I, to found a city. A city which will be in the very path of the march to the west. A city which will be ours. Lock, stock, and barrel, if I may use a cliché. I don't care what you use. I gotta get back to the herd. Which brings us to the point of the discussion. I'll put it to you quite frankly. The establishment of great enterprises, always, alas, requires money. The greater the establishment, the greater the money. You are going to be helpful in this respect. Listen, Judge, I ain't interested in your city. But you are interested in getting your herd across the river. Well, thank you, Thompson. That will cost you $5 a head. How large is your herd? $3,000, and we ain't gonna pay any $5 a head. That is the price as of this moment. If we are forced to continue negotiations, the price may rise. Yeah, well, if I know Mr. Favor, there won't be any continuing of negotiations. Who's Mr. Favor? He's the trail boss. I'm just a ramrod of the outfit. You a good trail boss? Yeah, he's good. Then he'll know that there's only one spot within 100 miles to cross the river. He'll also know that by paying the small toll which we ask, he'll be saving himself a great deal of time and money. We're taking our cattle across the river, and we're saving money because we're not going to pay a toll. You're a very young man, Mr. Yates. Is Mr. Favor any older? Yeah, he's older. Good. An older head is always a cooler head. You may convey my respects to Mr. Favor. You may also inform him as to whatever happened here. I shall expect to hear from him very soon. Yeah, well, I'll tell him what you said, but don't expect to hear from him. He ain't that much older. What's that? A bugle. I know that, but who's playing it? Captain Donahoe was a very gallant soldier, a very fine leader. Many of the men you see here fought under him. They will continue to do so. Now, the bugler, you seem strangely interested in him. Uh, was he around our camp last night? I believe Captain Donahoe issued such instructions, didn't you, Captain? I did, sir. You may be wondering why. The answer is very simple. It's always best to do business with frightened men, with worried men. The sound of the bugle in the night, did it frighten many of your men? It didn't frighten anyone. Did it worry them? You're free to return to the river. Three thousand. 
5,000 head of cattle. Five dollars a head. Judge. Yes? Do we have any right to make them pay a toll? Of course we have. It's our land, isn't it, that they're crossing? Is it? I'm just a farmer. Well, I used to be a farmer. But land that you own is land that you've bought and you've paid for. Captain, I admire you. You have sterling virtues. I would not have consented to your marriage to my daughter otherwise. But you have no imagination. In more settled parts of our country, it is true, land to be owned must be paid for. In the West, however, there are other ways of acquiring land. Just by taking it? By establishing sovereign rights through possession, improvement, and development. I don't understand that. Of course you don't. I do, however. You can believe me when I assure you that everything we're doing is perfectly legal. We'll not always be surrounded by such squalor. We'll build our castles. One day, your children, my grandchildren, will be very grateful. They will inherit a kingdom. Who's going to be the king? Well, that's about the size of it. Jay Hawkers haven't got a nickel to their name or a roof over their heads or an honest bone in their body. Pete, any way of bypassing the river? Yeah, but it'll take five or six days longer. And then there is a way. If we head west and then go north. Water? Yeah, we'd be crossing some of the smaller streams that feed the Woosatch River. Yeah, but five or six extra days. Time is cheaper than money. What are you, afraid of those jayhawkers or something? Ooh, they got a lot of rifles. Yeah, well, so have we. Their job is to use them. What are ours doing, just sitting in the wagon? Our job is to push this beef north to Sedalia. Boss, if you ask my opinion... I'd get it, but I ain't asked. I can't see running away from a fight with a bunch of outlaws. Well, keep the beef moving. What about the cattle we've already got down to the river? We'll pick them up in the morning. Well, suppose they won't let us, huh? There's only about 100 head. We can afford to lose them. They ain't worth any $15,000 or any of the men's lives. Boss. Yeah? The men are willing to fight. Well, I ain't. I ain't counted all the graves of all the drovers who died in useless fights. But I know there's too many of them. Better get some sleep. Don't touch it. Who's Mr. Favor? That'd be me. Captain Donna. Oh, yeah, the Jayhawker. Talk civil. Is it wrong? Start moving the herd. Where? Right where you were going, the Woosatch River. Oh, we're not crossing the Woosatch. That's where you're wrong. Drovers won't need guns to drive cattle, Mr. Wallace. Sure, Captain. Don't worry about your night guards. We didn't hurt them. How long will it take you to get the herd to the river? Most of the day. Start them moving. The men ain't eaten yet. It's too bad. Captain! I don't know whether you're a real captain or a fake captain, but there's one thing you can mighty well be sure of. You're gonna be a dead captain if your men don't put their guns down. You're lucky my men didn't kill you. Leave it, go wish. Now, are you gonna move this herd or are my men gonna move it for you? You'll move it. Let's get moving.
men know their job. Yeah. Take Mr. Favor to see Judge Brady. Keep a guard all night. All right, Captain. Let's go, Mr. Favor. I think Pete and I ought to go along with you. I don't care what you think, Mr. Yates. You talk pretty big when you got all the guns, don't you? You think I need a gun to handle you? Yeah, I think you do. If I did have more important things to do, I might take you up on it. More important things like stealing cattle? Now, what are we waiting for? Yep. You seem worried, my dear. Where's Brian? I haven't seen him all day. Young love is a wonderful thing. Separated from your husband for an entire day, and you're practically on the verge of hysterics. I'm not on the verge of hysterics. I'm frightened. Indeed. Every time you send him out, I don't know... A soldier's know... wife must be brave. I sometimes think almost braver than the soldier himself. I didn't marry a soldier. What on earth do you think you married? A gentleman? A good, decent man. You married, to be precise, a fool. One, however, who happens to possess the ability to lead men. Fools of that sort have risen very high. Napoleon was a miserable chess player. However, he made a very fine general. We're in the wilderness. My husband leads a handful of ignorant men, and you dream of empires. Father, I don't want Brian to be any part of your dreams or schemes or plans. I need him. See these louts? Appendages of the rifles they carry? Not one of them would follow me. They all follow Brian wherever he leads them. He is very necessary to me, Mary. I would advise you not to interfere. Mrs. Donahoe, Mr. Favor. Captain Donahoe's wife and my daughter. How do you do, Mr. Favor? Ma'am, I want to get back to my herd as quick as possible. Certainly not before you dine with us. Please be seated. That's a real tall sheep. Don't get worried. They all know how to share him. Not so sure. Looks kind of smart. Judge Brady can handle him with words. Captain Donahoe can handle him with his fists. Please sit down. Perhaps some wine will help your appetite. I'm not thirsty. Of course you're not. Wine is much too noble a drink to be used to quench one's thirst. It stimulates the appetite, quickens the intellect, quickens the imagination. I'm afraid it'd be wasted on me, then. The only thing I'm interested in at the moment is my herd. I make it a rule never to discuss business at table. Well, let's go someplace else, then. There's no hurry. Whatever you may think, Mr. Favor, there's no hurry at all. I think there is. Any business I got to do with Jayhawkers, I want to get over with quick. I don't like the word Jayhawker, so don't use it again. Let's not quibble over proper nouns. As I said, we will not discuss business. Mr. Favor, what is a Jayhawker? Mary. Brian, I want to know. Mr. Favor. Jayhawker is another term for thief. I like your sense of humor, Mr. Favor. You call my father and my husband thieves. Brian, I'd like to dance. Dance? Yes. That's the waltz he's playing. You know I don't know how to dance. I'd forgotten. Mr. Favor? Ma'am? Would you like to dance? I didn't come here to dance. Thank you. Whatever your business is with my father, he won't discuss it till he's finished dinner. You might as well dance with me. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Mr. 
Rather surprising man, the trail bot. Seems to have the manners of a gentleman. Mary and he look quite well together. Mr. Favor? Yes? I'm going to keep on smiling as though I were discussing the latest Paris fashion. But I want to know why my husband brought you here. You really don't know what your husband is. Why are you here? By invitation, of course. Extended at the point of a gun. I'm driving a herd of 3,000 cattle up the Sedalia Trail. Your father and your husband are asking for five dollars a head. Let us cross the river. Isn't that usual? I mean, when you're crossing other people's land? It's not usual. Especially since Jayhawkers don't have any land. If they had, this wouldn't be it. Why not? Mrs. Donahoe, I think it's about time you asked your husband some questions. Well, the answers I get wouldn't be his. They'd be my father's. You won't be allowed to leave tonight. Please don't try. Please stay. It means everything to me, as well as to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Faber. Thank you. Good night. Mary always was fond of dancing. I'm afraid the poor child has had little opportunity of late. However, there are more important things than social graces, aren't there, Captain? I didn't bring Mr. Favor here to entertain my wife. Of course you didn't. We look on the dance as a bonus, a very small bonus. However, the toll remains to be collected. Toll for what? Five dollars per head for crossing the river and trespassing. Trespassing? On whose land? Ours? This is Indian land. The government set it aside for the Cherokee tribes. Judge, is he telling the truth? He's telling what he thinks to be the truth, or what may even have been the truth at one time. That time is past. The Cherokees know this? If they don't, I'll be very glad to tell them. You said this was open territory. It is open territory. Look, I don't know anything about legal matters. All I know about is fighting. But I'm not going to fight for land that doesn't belong to me. Since you've admitted your ignorance, suppose you leave the legal matters to me. If I thought you were lying to me. Mr. Favor, the fee has been set. Are you prepared to pay? I ain't got the money even if I would. I won't have until the herd's sold, and even then the money ain't mine. In that case, we have only one recourse. Confiscation of your entire herd. Couldn't we have done all this without the song and dance? Captain, I think we'd better detain Mr. Favor here. His men will be less likely to cause trouble. Slim, Norman! Lock him up. Saddle my horse. You're riding the river with me.
I'll be your hostage. It's the only way to save Brian and me. And also to save you, Mr. Faber. Get the buckets. Well, now the cook's going down to the creek to get some water. And the cook's helper's going out and get some firewood. Any objections from you generals? Now hurry up and get that wood. Easy, mushy. Easy. Sorry, but I, I didn't want you yelling out. Why, I would have. This is Mrs. Donahoe. I want Mrs. Donahoe to hide in the supply wagon. Why, it'll be a pleasure. And I don't want any of the Jayhawkers to see her. Well, they're on the other side of the wagons. When I take the firewood in, I'll kind of act up. And they won't notice her getting in on this side. Good. Try singing. Yeah, that always gets them. Wagon on the left. Camp Town races, five miles long. Do da, do da. Bet my money on a bark tail neck. Run, run all night. Do da, do da. Run, run all day. Da, 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 da. Go to town with your head cake. What do you think you're doing? I'm singing. <laughs> Why, what? That's what you think. Mrs. Donahue, the captain's wife, she's hiding in the supply way. Miss... Oh, I'll get... Mr. Faber brought her. He's out where he got the wood. Well, uh, sun-up's no time to be singing. And in your case, the moonlight isn't either. Now get the water on. Well, you can guard without being in my way. I'm going to go get a sack of coffee. It's all right. I'll bring you some breakfast. That bacon sure smells good, Captain. Yeah, well, we're not eating their food. Uh, we ain't eating ours, either. 3,000 head of cattle's enough to swallow in one morning. Leave these three men here to guard at Drovers. Take the rest and push that herd across the river. Right, Captain. We're moving the cattle across the river. Mount. Good to see you. What are they up to? They're gonna move the herd across the river. They are, huh? Well, they can try. You better get back before they miss you. What do you plan on doing? You just wait. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
something wrong with those steers. Something wrong with the way we're handling them, maybe. Oh, well, we're no drovers. There's plenty of drovers around. I want you to move the herd across the river. Kind of thought you did. They don't want to go. My old grandpappy told me there'd be days like this. Through having your fun? Get on those horses and move that herd across the river. I thought this was some kind of a trick. You saw him trying. How do you usually get him across the river? Mr. Favor usually worries about it. You haven't done it all? Judge let you go? Well, he was asleep when I left. So it was nearly everyone else. Nearly everyone else? Wife was up. Dave, if you've hurt my wife, I'll kill you. There's no need to. You mean she just let you walk out? She came with me. She's all right. Where is she? I'll trade you your wife for my herd. I'll find her. It was her idea. You're a liar. You sure? I'm not sure of anything. Like, I'm not sure if it's right for me to take your herd. Are you willing to fight for your herd? The men got all our guns. I'm not talking about the men. I'm talking about us. I'll fight for my herd. Ready? That's all. You lose the fight, but you win your herd. No man can take a beating like you have. And just keep coming back for more unless he knows that what he's fighting for is right. Well, I don't know that I'm right. I'm very proud of you. Why, because I won the fight? Yes. And I don't mean just the fist fight. If I may interrupt, no one is giving away my herd. I thought you were a fighting man, Donahoe. 
You gonna let him throw away something that's already in your hands? All you have to do is reach out. I'm not listening to any more of your speeches, Judge. You men thought you were taking orders from me. You weren't. You were taking them from him. But you're gonna take one last order from me. From me. Let the herd go. As you wish. I don't know. I'll have to stop the bleeding. Mercy! Get my doctor's kit. Take him across. Good soak. Uh, good. How's uh, Captain Donahoe making out? All right. Medical doctor, as soon as we can get him to, want to make him good as new. Yeah. Which one says you're going to be as good as new? Better than new. You got the cattle across the river? Uh huh? Mind telling me how? Well, you picked the wrong place. Too many snags and dead trees in the river where you tried to cross. And you picked the wrong time. The sun was just rising and shining in the cattle's eyes. Steer just won't go across the river unless he can see the other bank. All I had to do was take him down the river and wait until the sun was high enough in the sky so it wouldn't blind him. And the cattle and me both. Oh, our scout says we'll be passing the town in a couple, three hours. We'll get you there, Captain. It isn't Captain any longer, Mr. Taylor. It's Brian Donahoe. Farmer. And a good one. Catch up when you can. through there in less than a day. Yeah, if this weather holds, we can. If we get a storm up in them hills, and that creek bed will be 10 feet underwater. Hey, look. Somebody's taking a wild ride. Yeah, let's go.
way they teach you to say thanks where you come from, Sonny? Thanks. Now go on, get moving. Somebody ought to teach you a lesson, huh? You better watch him, Rowdy. He's spookier than the horses. Yeah, well, the spanking will change that. I said clear out. Beat? What's going on? Well, up here is showing his appreciation. What for? Oh, his team ran away. We caught him for it. All right, let's put away the gun. You want to play games, I'll blow your head off. Now, what's it all about, son? Look, if you want to fool around with guns, you're taking a chance on somebody getting killed. Now, you better come up with a pretty good reason. Now, stay away from there. Sorry, I don't mean any harm. Is that your mother? Has she been this way long? Pete, let's have your canteen. Here, you do it. Wet a cloth. Put it on her forehead. Thank you. Your mother and sister? Now, you've got enough trouble without asking for more. What are you doing out here? What's your name? Billy M Manson. You live around here? Back in the hills. Where's your pa? Away someplace. Where? Can you get a hold of him? Well? What do you care? Now, look, just snap out of it. I don't give duly about you. But that woman in there is sick. A lot sicker than you must realize. Being bounced around in this wagon ain't doing her a bit of good. She wants us to take her to Itasca. Itasca? That's a town about 15 miles east. Good. Town's the best place for her. All right, get rolling. As soon as you get into town, you get a hold of a doctor first thing, eh? Well, he'll never make it, boys. He's got a couple of broken spokes in that wheel already. I don't suppose you got a spare wheel? No. Nope. And no fence wire, neither. No. All right, Rennie, you ride into town. Get a hold of a doctor. Bring him out to the valley. We'll be making camp there. Follow along after us. And take it real easy with that wheel. That goes before we reach the herd. We'll be just as bad off as if we had never tried. I'll do my best. Good. Slack. That's why they run off with you before. All right, you don't have to tear their head off. Ease off a little, that's it. That's better. We'll be there in a little bit. The wheel's holding fine. Looks like we're gonna make it. Good. You notice them up there? Yeah. Billy seems like a nice kid. Yeah, he's good enough boy. He hasn't got a gun in his hand.
I'm gonna pick quite a chug hole. Now, what do you think you're doing? Uh, cutting the bread, like you said. Slices, not hunks. Butcher. Thin, like you're shaving it. Hey, wishbone. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Was that all? Did you ever stop and figure how many milk cows we got with 3,000 steers? What'd you want milk for, anyway? Well, you don't want me to feed anything else to a growing girl, do you? Is that any better? Yeah. in a tray. Don't you know nothing about serving young ladies? Uh, I'll get you some grub in a minute, son. Thanks. Well, that's no way to fix a wagon wheel. Didn't I tell you how to cook? All the time. All right, I'll listen just as well as you do. Here you are, young lady, a nice hot supper. Thank you. But I'm not hungry. Oh, come on. You gotta eat. Well, I fixed it for you special. Beef stew. Ain't anybody can cook beef stew like me. You're very right, Senor Wishbone. There is nobody who can cook anything like you. And who asked you to butt in? I would like the company of the young senorita while she has supper. I may. Mm -hmm. uh, that is all, Senor Wishbone. Uh, when she's hungry, the senorita will eat. I am Jesus. My name is Lori. Very pretty. You know, you remind me of my sobrina. Uh, my, uh, the child of my sister, the daughter. Your niece? Si. <laughs> you have eyes just like her. And the long hair, and the oyuelos de las mejillas. Uh, the, uh, when you smile, uh, the hold. Dimples. Si. I teach you Spanish, and you teach me English, all right? Uh, here. This, leche. Cuchara. Tenedor. This. Pan. And this, guisado de vaca. Mmm, you know, I owe Senor Wishbone an apology. You would like to try some now? Good. your wagon and figured you needed some help. There's a doctor coming. The Tasca. We're only a few miles away. The children must get to Atasca. My sister's coming. Coming on the stagecoach. All right, you just rest up now. Please help them get to Atasca to meet their aunt. Tomorrow. Please help them. We'll take care of it. Say, where's your husband, ma'am? Does he know you like this? Look, if you could tell us where he is, maybe we could get a hold of him. My husband is dead. Mr. Favor, Rowdy's brought the doc. Oh. 
Oh, Mr. Favor, this is Dr. Crowler. Mr. Favor? Doctor, I'm glad you could come. Do you know what's wrong? Well, she's got a bad fever. Breathing's hard and bad cough. Been that way long? Well, I guess so. We just came across her this afternoon. She's in the wagon. Thank you. Can I see my mother now? Well, a little while, Laurie. Better let the doctor look at her first. Uh, but I should be with her. Soon, Laurie. Come on, sis. Everything's gonna be all right now. Kid's still playing with gun? No, I guess he was just rattled this afternoon. Or else it's his nature. Hmm? Check this. I picked this up in town. Yes, and she said her husband was dead. Yeah, and the kid said his father was away. What are you gonna do? Nothing right now. Making enough trouble as it is. Flavor? Got you. The men camped on high ground across the valley. They ain't doing nothing particular, but figured I ought to tell you. Our holders don't usually advertise, but I guess we better check on it. Pete, mount up. I'll go with you. No, you better stick here. Evening. Evening. Howdy, my name's Favor. Wasn't that hurt down there? Nice of you to pay us a visit, Mr. Favor. You worried about your beeves? <laughs> just being careful. Oh, we're just easing through, looking for work. You wouldn't need a couple of drovers, would you? I'm sorry, but I'm full up at the moment. You should have come down to the chuck wagon, though, had supper with us. We thought about it. We're running kind of short. Don't much like sharing unless we can chip in our little piece. You know how it is. Yeah, I know. Good night. Night. Don't you worry none about your cattle. They're safe. With 20 drovers, I don't have to worry too much. Favor, doctor couldn't do nothing. Best let them be, Mr. Favor. They'll be a comfort to each other, and they need a good cry. Sit up all night. You better have something to keep the chill out of your bones. Thanks, Wick. Say, what are you doing up so late anyway? I'm not sleeping. Oh, if you're worried about the kids, they're all right. They're asleep. Shows how much you know. Last time I looked in on Laurie, she was crying fit to bust. Not making a sound either. Just lying there. Tears rolling down her cheeks. Like you say, she's got to cry it out. Helps to know someone's around, feeling miserable right along with you. Put her out there in them cottonwoods. Hey, I didn't mean you had to do it right away. Could have waited until it stopped raining. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna rain all night. Figured it was better to get it over with. Be kind of rough on the kids to see their ma being buried. First time I ever knew you to use your brains. You know, it's funny. 
I've dug a lot of graves. You'd think I'd be getting used to it after a while. Seems if you really got used to it, you wouldn't have much use for the living. It don't seem right, though. Maybe it's because she's a woman. What do you mean, a woman dying? No, I mean, being left alone out here in the middle of nowhere like this. It's different with a man. A man's pretty much of a loner anyhow. A woman ought to be left with her folks. You know, when, when I was a kid, my pa used to take me out to the churchyard now and then to pay respects to his ma. And she was, she was buried right there with her ma and sister and some other kid I never even heard of. It all seemed kind of right that way, you know, all being buried together. That's what I mean. But it ought to be that way with her, too. Aren't you both forgetting something? I mean, uh, a woman don't just lie there in the ground any more than a man does. She's not off in those cottonwoods. And your pa's ma and those others, they're not in that churchyard. They're with their family and friends, where they ought to be. Yeah, well, that's all according to how you believe. Well, no, I'm not giving you any preacher talk, Roddy. Heaven and hell and the hereafter. I don't know anything about that. What I mean is, right here on this earth, I don't think anybody ever really dies. Don't make any difference what happens to the bones. They'll be alive in the minds and hearts they live in. You talk about your kin in that churchyard. Don't that keep them alive? I suppose so, yeah. Same with that woman out there in those cottonwoods. She won't be alone. She'll be with her children. You may be right, but how are we gonna get them kids to understand that? Afraid you can't. One of those things that takes time. About all anybody can do is help them over the rough spots till they learn it's the why and how of things. Says it mighty well over here. Oh, Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and evening comes. And the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Got anything you want to add? Amen. That wanted poster, I guess I better tear that up, huh? We'll see. Mm, gotta let up soon. Maybe we can even get out of here today. What about the kids? What about them? Well, they're all alone now. You'd better check on that first. <laughs> think it takes any time to pack this wagon and then unpack it again within a half hour. I know it takes time. Well, then why'd you move the camp five miles? The grazing ain't any better. The scenery's the same, flat and full of cows. Only reason I can think of you did it was to plague me. Wish, I just thought it might be better if we parked the camp away from the mother's grave. Oh, won't take any time at all to get the coffee. You know that. Think this is the best time to be showing her that, Billy? Is there ever going to be a better time, Mr. Favor? That's our father. Only we didn't know he got out. Why? Why did he have to get out? Can't he ever leave us alone? Laurie! Now it's going to start all over again. Everybody hating us and everybody talking about us. Why couldn't it have been him instead of Mom? 
she just don't understand. Well, I think she understands all right. Maybe. But she was too young to know him, really know him, like I did. Pa loved us, Mr. Favor. He did everything he could to take good care of us. And as far as this, well, Mr. Favor, the way I figure it, a man does what he has to. What's inside of him making him do it? Fine. As long as he doesn't hurt anybody else. My father never hurt nobody, Mr. Favor. At least not on purpose, anyway. Well, we got your sister and you to worry about now. Last night, your mother told me you were going to Atosca to meet an aunt. Was she going to take you someplace? Back east, for a visit. But I think... I think we should go home now. Home? You mean that place in the hills? It's a small place, but I can take care of it by myself. I've been doing most of the work since... since Ma took sick. What about Lori? You think that's gonna be good for her, living up there alone in the hills? She'll get along all right. Like your mother? Mr. Faber, I don't want to go back east. You want to deny Lori the chance? At least the chance to make up her own mind. No. Why not do what your ma wanted? See your aunt, talk it out between you, decide then. I guess. Now, if you're gonna make it into town before nightfall, you better get moving. Hey, boss! Back in a minute. How's Canyon? Well, just the way Pete figured, all right. Rain's got it plumb up to here and it's roaring. No way to get through today. Man, we'll have to hold up. That sure won't make me mad. Say, uh, remember those two men? The ones camped on the other side of the valley last night? Yeah, what about them? Well, I saw them on the way back. They were mighty interested in that burying. Watching it with spy glasses, even. Uh -huh. I watched them for a spell, and when it was over, they moseyed on. But it's a good bet they're still hanging around up there someplace. Somewhere's up that slope. Well, I'll grab me some grub, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't think those men are after this herd. It don't make sense. Don't make sense for them to be watching the burial or following the kid's wagon, neither. You figure on getting the kids into town? Kenyon's got a drain we'll have to hold over until tomorrow anyway. Yeah, I figured that. I tell Ryder to take care of things while I'm gone. Senor boss, you were thinking of taking the boy and girl into town? And if I was thinking about it? Uh, they wouldn't go without me, senor boss. They like me, I like them. You ask them. If I don't go, they'll stay with your herd forever and forever. Pete? You think Jesus giving me the business here? No, the kids kind of took a shine to him. All right, you drive the wagon so Billy can look after her sister. Si, sí, senor. Keep an eye on the water level. So there is a big fight between my mother and father whether to sell the chickens and buy the pig. My mother, she wants to keep the chickens because they lay the eggs. Why does your father want to keep the pig? Because he likes the pork chops. My mother, she wins the fight real quick. How? Oh, very simple. You see, she explains to my father that when you have the egg, you still have the chicken. But when you have the pork chop... Place for supper, eh? Why don't you get a couple of rooms? Leave the wagon at the delivery stable. I'll see when the stage is due. See, si, Senor Favor.
Excuse me, you got a stage coming in? Bound to or coming from? Well, I don't know exactly. Listen, mister, this is a busy town. We get four runs a week here. Sorry, um, I know it's coming from the east. Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, makes connections clear back to St. Louis. Well, thanks a lot. thousand dollars. That's a lot of money for one man. Bankers Association put it up. An escaped prisoner? Guess they're afraid of him again. Territorial prison. That's way over in Arizona territory. Yep. What makes him think he'd come back here? Home grounds. Got a small place up in the hills. Mm hmm You know him? Saw him a couple of times. Kept to himself mostly. Federal marshals wanted to took him. How long was he in for? Fifteen years, served seven. Behaved himself pretty good, too, what I hear. Then something happened. Got a letter from his wife, I think. Just spooked. Thanks. You working alone? Working? Competition's pretty rough. You're getting a late start. I don't follow you. The way you said, a lot of money for one man. Like sugar. Draws plenty of flies. Oh, I'm with a cattle drive about 15 miles west of here. Some of them just strays, drifting through. Some of them hands looking for work. All ask the same questions, got the same look. I'm not a bounty hunter. If I'm wrong, I apologize. I'm looking for Manson, too. Hey, speaking of bounty hunters, but uh, we weren't where we... both asleep. What's the matter, senor boss? What's troubling you? Oh, I was just thinking about those bounty hunters after Manson's reward. But they follow the children. Sure. They expect the kids to lead them right to the father. Come to think of it, that's why Billy probably took that shotgun to us. He must have spotted them, figured we were part of them. So they waste their time. For one thing, we are here. And the other, the children do not know where their father is. You heard Billy. He didn't even know of the escape. Well, even if they don't know where he is, it shouldn't be too hard for Manson to find them. Why should he want to find them? Well, from the way Billy talked, Manson's a strong family man. He broke jail when he got the letter from his wife. She must have told him she'd taken ill, send the kids back east. So he comes to them. What is that to us? I'd just hate to see anything interfere with if they're going back east, getting away from this kind of trouble. So you do not have to think long, senor. It will be over tomorrow. See? I uh, think you're closest to the lamps, aren't you? Mr. Faber, where did Billy go? Dear sis, it's better if you go with Aunt Martha alone. I can't. I've got to go back and help Pa. I'll think about you all the time. Please think of me, too. 
Billy. What does he think he does? Loring, you sure Billy doesn't know where his father is? No, honest. But where does he go? Go back. Only place I guess he could mean his home. Oh, please, Mr. Faber, bring him back. Don't let him. You probably got a pretty good start. You will go after him, senor boss? Yeah. Again, Billy? I thought you and me was beginning to understand each other. I don't want to go back east. I want to stay here. You could have told me that when you took off. Saved me a long ride. Yeah? You wouldn't have listened? You'd have dragged me back. Oh, I might have wanted to. But I couldn't. I got no say on you. You think I'm good bait to catch him? I never even thought of trying to get your paw. Yeah, you can say that. Why you come back here? To warn him? No, he's nowhere around here. Look, all I want to do is be alone. So will you do me a favor and get out? What about Lori? She took it pretty hard and she found you gone. She'll get over it. Sister's a little different, Billy. She needs a man to help her grow up. You're the only one she's got. All right, she can come here and live with me. That wouldn't work out and you know it. Look, you said you had no say-so on me, so will you just get out of here and leave me alone? All right. It's a long ride back. Oh, wait till sun up. No. Doc, I got nothing more to say to you. I'll just stay here and keep you company. He's got company. Pa? It's been a long time, Billy. Pa! <laughs> Pretty old for this kind of thing, aren't we? I knew you was coming. I was waiting for you. It took some doing. I was afraid I'd be too late. Your ma wrote said you's all going back east. I wanted to see you. Where, where's Ma and Lori? Ma? Yeah, Ma. L Lori's in a Tosca. Oh. Ma, too? She must be feeling better. What's the matter, boy? She's dead, Manson. Last night. Dead? She wrote me. Said she just wasn't feeling good. Bad cold. It was lung fever. We had a medical doctor. Even he couldn't do nothing. Tried to get back. You, mister? I'm 
trail boss. We come across your boy. He needed some taken care of. For the reward? No, Pa. He helped us. He took Lori and I to the task after my... You left Lori there alone? She's with a friend of mine. We're going to be together now, son. That's what I came back for, Pa. I mean, like a family, the three of us, you and Lori. I'm going to look after you from now on. I think Lori maybe ought to go back east. No, she's staying with us. We'll go to Mexico. It, it'll be better for us there. You go into town. Bring her out. Well, I don't think Jesus is going to let her come. Jesus? He's a wrangler with our herd. Well, you tell that wrangler if he don't let her go, he won't see his boss again. Oh, Pa. That's the way to make things move in this world, boy. Yeah, but Pa, Mr. Faker. Now, look. You're wasting time. Go on. Get going. Now, you hand me that gun, mister. You'll sit easier. Now, just relax. We got ourselves a wait. Bounty men crawling all over this territory. You sure you got the time? I got more time than you have. <laughs> Amigo, you don't expect us to swallow that, do you? Your boss and the kid didn't go out this late because they like riding in the moonlight. They were figuring on meeting Cleet Manson someplace, weren't they? Well, weren't they? You're being awful stubborn, maybe too stubborn. The way I see it, you've got no reason to protect Manson, unless, of course, you got some ideas of making a piece of change out of this yourself. Is that it? All right, I'll make a deal with you, amigo. It's a big reward. We'll cut you in, 50 bucks worth. That's nearly two months' wages. I've already told you 10 times. I don't know where they went. But they did go to meet Manson. Look, Manson could have taken the boy and cut out by this time. And leave his daughter? Wouldn't you if it meant your life? He'll show sooner or later. How do you know? What makes you such an authority? Look, we've been checking him and his record for a long time, ain't we? Whatever else he is, he's a family man, whether you overlook that or not. You're out of your mind. The kind of men we bring in ain't family men. I'm going down for a drink. Yeah, you do that. Have three. One for you, one for me, and one for the family man. You don't think I'll kill you if they don't come back, do you? But you was just a thief, not a killer. I learned me some new tricks in that territorial prison. And you're gonna teach him all to Billy, huh? I'm gonna teach him to stand up on his hind legs and fight back. Against what? Against anybody that tries to crowd him. Now, he ain't going through what I did. Never getting a decent chance, caught in a backwash, grubbing in the dirt till you can't see your fingers for the blood. Begging at the store, begging at the tax office, living on handouts. And the bank business paid better. You bet it did. I wasn't standing still no more. I was going out and get my wife and kids what they deserve. A place like this? Well, what seven years in my life are in theirs? You think your wife wouldn't have traded every minute of that time to go back to Grudman and patching your bleeding fingers? Now, you just better hope Billy and Lori come back. <laughs> Dedos must always look nice. Like a good father, Amigo. Thank you. 
Don't do enough to bite the nails off your fingers. Here, settle down, both of you. What's the matter with you two, anyway? I'm sorry, it's my nerves. They can't stand the little girls that bite the nails off the fingers. <laughs> Come on, Laurie. Where's in your favor? He's at the farm. Come on, get dressed. You're coming with me. He's coming with you where? Home. Look, my father's waiting for us. That's all right, Miss Senor Favor. He's got no say. He said so himself. Now listen, you tell me everything. Look, if I don't bring Laurie back, Pa's gonna kill Mr. Favor. What? Uh, get dressed. Hey, Suze, I don't want to go back. Get dressed. <laughs> Senor Favor. Right here, Jesus. Thanks. All right, inside. Lori, girl. I almost forgot how pretty you was. Were you the picture of your mother already? I guess you don't remember me very much. You was just a little sprout when I went away. I guess you and me are gonna have to get acquainted all over again. All right, son, get supplies. Grub, blankets, everything. Put on one of them horses up there. You and your friend are gonna have to walk back. This whole territory's after you. How do you expect to make it with two kids? They won't be looking for a peaceful family, man. Is that what you wanted them for? Oh. Now, I told you they're mine! I'm going to keep this family together. We're going to start all over again in Mexico. No. I won't go. Lori. I won't go anywhere with you. But Lori. It's all your fault, everything. You went away and left us alone, and nobody would have anything to do with us because of you. Nobody would even talk to us. Ma, she had to do everything all by herself, all alone. Even when she got sick, you did that. You killed her. Lori, you don't have any idea what you're saying. You killed her. It's all right, Pa. She don't understand. She don't know what she's talking about. You, son? You gonna stick? Yeah, Pa, I'm sticking. It's all right. Girl would just be a drag on us anyway. Forget the supplies. We'll travel light. You do something for me? Depends. Make sure she gets back to her aunt. It's been almost like having Ma with us. Come on. Billy, do you have to go? I want to. We gotta stick together now. And you take care of yourself, remember? And maybe I'll write you sometime. Well, I'll write too. I'm gonna miss you something terrible. All right, boy, let's go. Now, Lori, you mind your ways now. Your mom raised you to be a lady. You do that. You brought the law. No. Come up, Manson. We got your code. The bounty hunters, they followed us. Get her out. Back there, Jesus. Cover the back. Well, go on. You got a gun. Use it. Now you can start teaching them all your tricks, Manson. Pay attention, mister. You can get killed. Fine education you're gonna give him. Guns and killing. We'll get out of here. And then what? You're gonna teach him how to run? Being afraid of everybody and everything? Living in holes, afraid to show his face? Now, I told you to pay attention to what's going on outside, mister. They're not the only ones, Manson. There are a lot more, and they're all gunning for you. Now they're gonna be gunning for Billy, too. You think he can pay attention? Well, it's too late. There's no other way. You can give up. We 
open and go back, start my sentence all over again? Just how much time is your son worth, Manson? Pa, pa, let's make a run for it. Pa, let's make a run for it. You mean that, Billy? Sure. Just the two of us. I said I'm sticking. Oh, you're lucky, Manson. Not every man gets what he wants. Hold it, Manson. If you won't listen to one thing, you're going to listen to this. Mr. Favor! You stay in here, Billy. I'm going with him. I'm not going any place. I'm not going to let you live the life he does. Anything he does is all right with me. You're not leaving. You'll have to use that trigger to stop me. If I have to? No! Lori. Please, Mr. Favor, don't. Lori, Lori, get out of the way. All right, Favor, let it drop. Oh, you can't. Well, it's him or me, ain't it? But it's Lori. If all you can do is snivel, then shut up. What do you say, Favor? Now, you stay here. I got no use for a mealy mouth spineless whelp. <laughs> Maybe it's not the right thing to say, but it's good for the children the way this happens. Yeah. 